who wouldn't want to do Guys and Dolls? It's such a great evening at the theater. It has great music. It has opportunities for great dance. The characters are famously vivid and sort of unusual and quirky. Um, it has a such a joyful aspect to it. It's so full of life. Um, it's a great American classic of musical theater. It's a real old-fashioned musical musical with, with great funny scenes, characters, dance, song, all of that. For me, it is some, some people who might know other parts of my work or what I mostly do might think it odd that I'm doing something that is already so successful and so well known and has been around uh, for so long as a, as a great work of, of theater. Um, for me, it's actually rather radical to take on something like that. Um, although the stories that I've done all my life have in their own cultures or in sort of different worlds and literary worlds been as classic and as vital and as central as Guys and Dolls is to the American musical theater canon. I mean, the Odyssey is sort of central to Western narrative, for instance, and I've done that. Or White Snake is as common in China as Cinderella is here. So it is another, I've always done classics, but maybe not classics of, um, you know, this world. <laughs> the contemporary world so much. Um, but I have thought about the fact that what I've always been interested in my work is radical transformation or even transfiguration. In White Snake, the women are also snakes, and there's a kind of uh, radical transformation to gaining a human heart or, or, or soul. And in lots of my shows, unusual things happen where people turn into birds or whatever. And in a way, uh, Sky Masterson's and Nathan Detroit's conversions in Guys and Dolls are just as miraculous um, as someone's transformation into a bird or a woman into a snake. When you think about it, going from being an outlaw gangster, confirmed bachelor, to wholly, happily domesticated and sort of giving up the life, and I hope I'm not spoiling any end of Guys and Dolls for people, but there is... Um, there is transformation. And just like in all the myths and the fairy tales, though, they actually are transforming back to what they, they are inside. Um, I feel like Sky Masterson has a hidden sort of sensitivity and interiority that's hinted at uh, by the fact that he actually knows the Bible very well, that his real name is Obadiah, um, that is brought out by Sarah. Sarah is his match. And Nathan and Adelaide are so, they're already perfectly matched and have been for 14 years. He's just got to come around to, um, in a way, giving up his fantasy that he's a free man. He hasn't been for 14 years and um, do the deal, you know, that he's been sort of afraid of doing, marrying her. You know, I've only done a couple of musicals now before this, although I've worked in opera uh, uh, quite a bit now. Um, but there's something about rehearsing with music that makes one's job even more delightful. Also maddening, because you don't get the tunes out of your head ever. But you sort of get to ride on the genius of those musics and the lyrics. Lyrically, it's so good. It's so funny and smart and complete. And you get to, to ride on that energy, and it lifts the room. It's very hard to be tired or down or despondent or anything when you're in the room with that music every day. And there's just a great joyfulness. And you know, as a director, um, I get to also somewhat just stand by while they're learning the music. I get to just listen. That's not as much my job as it is my musical director, Doug Pax, so that for them to practice the music and learn the music. But you know, you're in a room with singing and dancing. And I've noticed ever since I was a student and took dance class that it didn't matter what mood I went into class and you come out kind of exhilarated and washed clean um, in terms of your mood. And I think, you know, that's partly what accounts for the popularity of musicals, obviously. There's something about that rhythmic drive, those tunes um, that our bodies and our mood responds to so joyfully. And I'm not saying there's not sad moments and melancholy moments and um, ballads that affect us very deeply and tragedy affects us very, very deeply, obviously, and washes us out in a different way. But it does <coughs> literally lift the spirits. And 
that's true of the company and the director and choreographer and everyone in the room as it is for the audience. So it's, it's great fun to work on a musical. It's always scary. There's always a ton to do. When you do a musical, you know, you've got to give hours and hours and hours to the music and hours and hours and hours to the dance. Um, as well as hours and hours to what you normally give time to, which is developing the characters and the scenes and the story and the plot and making sure it's clear and that it's rising and falling and accelerating and slowing down when it's supposed to. All of those thousands of choices there are always still there too. Um, but then there's all these other tasks of, of learning the spectacle of it. But that's all so much fun and it's very, very collaborative, you know, because you have a choreographer and a music director. So you're not just out there alone um, as the director. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very and unusual for me to, to work on a musical. It's only really, I guess, really my third. And the other two I had a big hand in the, in the writing of or the, make, the making of. So. I myself um, have not spent my life in musicals and going to musicals and I myself actually prefer this rather more old-fashioned musical where there are actual book scenes and lots of laughs and character development and plot and I've actually um, said for 20 years um, I don't necessarily like contemporary musicals so much I like guys and dolls I actually would use that phrase and I think you know even if you think you don't like musicals, there's, how do I say this? There's absolutely nothing pretentious. There's nothing assuming about it. There's no actual um, aura of importance, and yet, or like aura of admire this, admire this, and yet, it's deeply admirable because it's brilliantly constructed. It's such a full evening at the theater. The tunes and the lyrics are so good and so smart. And the characters are really, really memorable. And it clips along, you know? And even though, in a way, it has such a fairy tale, um, almost sentimental ending, there's, there's no moment of this musical that's kind of um, lax or pretending pretending something that it's that it's not it's 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 an open-handed entertainment which has a very hopeful longing in it that all can work out and that we will become ourselves through the encounter with others that bring out our real self to the other and um, that all will join hands in the end and that's something that always appeals to us, that hope uh, that we will find our match and somehow be changed and sort of completed by, by this match. And the show itself sort of promises that there aren't actually enemies, um, that, all can, that we all have the same heart of gold under, underneath or at least most people do, and that, and that that will win out in the end. Even in this supposedly sort of seedy world of outlaws and showgirls, everyone kind of just wants their little bit of happiness. And they, and they are chasing it in different ways, but in the end, they get it in actually a rather conventional way. But that's not so much dwelt on. It's all the, f it's all the fun of their world um, that's, so, that's so appealing.